Hi everyone, uh, hope you're all okay and uh, we'll carry on with uh, chapter one part two. Uh, if you remember, uh, Mola just re met Rat and uh, he decided uh, he was going to uh, finish his spring cleaning another time. He'd had enough, he was going out into the sun and the first person he met down on the river bank was Rat and they decided they were going to go on a picnic together. Uh, Moll had never been on a boat before and this was really exciting he'd never even seen a river before so they're very excited by the whole thing. I like your clothes awfully old chap he remarked after some half an hour or so had passed. I'm going to get a black velvet smoking suit myself some day as soon as I can afford it. I beg your pardon said Moll pulling himself together with an effort. You must think me very rude but all of this is new to me. So this is a, a river. The river corrected the rat. And you really live by the river. What a jolly life. By it, with it, on it and in it, said Rat. It's brother and sister to me and ants and company and food and drink and naturally washing. It's my world and I don't want any other. What it hasn't got is not worth having and what it doesn't know is not worth knowing. Lord, the times we've had together. What in winter or summer, spring or autumn, it's always got its fun and its excitement. When the floods are on in February and my cellars and basement are brimming with drink that's no good to me and the brown water runs by my best bedroom window or again when it all drops away and shows patches of mud that smells like plum cake and the rushes and weed clog the channels and I can potter about dry shod over most of the bed of it and find fresh food to eat and things careless people have dropped out of boats. But isn't it a bit dull at times said Mole, the Mole ventured to ask. Just you in the river, no one else to pass a word with. No one else to? Well, I mustn't be hard on you, said the rat with forbearance. You're new to it, and of course you don't know. The bank is so crowded nowadays that many people are moving away altogether. Oh no, it isn't what it used to be at all. Otters, kingfishers, dab chicks, moorhens, all of them about all day long, and always wanting you to do something, as if a fellow had no business of his own to attend to. What lies over there? asked the mole, waving a paw towards a background of woodland that darkly framed the water meadows on one side of the river. That, oh, that's just the wild wood, said Rat shortly. We don't go there much, we river bankers. Aren't they, aren't they very nice people in there? said the mole, a trifle nervously. Well, replied the rat, let me see. The squirrels are all right, and the rabbits, some of them, but the rabbits are a mixed lot. And then there's Badger, of course. He lives right in the heart of it. Wouldn't live anywhere else, either, if you paid him to do it. Dear old Badger. Nobody interferes with him. They'd better not, he added significantly. Why? Who should interfere with him? asked the Mole. Well, of course there are... There are others, explained the Rat in a hesitating sort of way. Weasels and stoats and foxes and so on. They're all right, in a way. I'm very good friends with them, past the time of day when we meet and all that, but they break out sometimes and there's no denying it, and then, well, you can't really trust them, and that's the fact. The Mole knew well that it was quite against animal etiquette to dwell on possible trouble ahead, or even to allude to it, so he dropped the subject. And beyond the wild wood again, he asked, where it's all blue and dim, and one sees what may be hills, or perhaps they may and something like the smoke of towns, or is it only cloud drift? Cloud drift, I beg your pardon. Beyond the wild wood comes the wide world, said the rat, and that's something that doesn't matter either to you or me. I've never been there, and I'm never going, nor you either, if you've got any sense at all. Don't ever refer to it again, please. Now then, here's our backwater at last where we're going to lunch. Leaving the main stream, they now passed into what seemed at first sight like a little landlocked lake. Green turf slopped down either edge, brown snaky tree roots gleamed below the surface of the quiet water, while ahead of them silvery shoulder and foamy tumble of a weir, arm in arm with a restless dripping mill wheel that held up its gr in turn a grey gabled mill house filled the air with soothing murmur of sound, dull and smothery, yet with little clear voices speaking up cheerfully out of it at intervals. It was so very beautiful that the mole could only hold up both forepaws and gasp, Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! The rat brought the boat alongside the bank. 
made her fast, helped the still awkward mole safely ashore and swung out the luncheon basket. The mole begged as a favour to be allowed to unpack it all by himself and the rat was very pleased to indulge him and to sprawl at full length on the grass and rest, while his excited friend shook out the tablecloth and spread it, took out all the mysterious packets one by one and arranged their contents in due order, still gasping. Oh my, oh my, at each fresh revelation. When all was ready, the rat said, Now pitch in, old fellow, and the mole was indeed very glad to obey, for he had started spring cleaning at a very early hour this, that morning, as people will do, and had not paused for a bite or sup, and he had been through a very great deal since that distant time, which now seems so many days ago. What are you looking at, said the rat presently, when the edge of their hunger was somewhat dulled, and the mole's eyes were able to wander off the tablecloth a little. I am looking, said the mole, at a streak of bubbles I see travelling along the surface of the water. That is a thing that strikes me as funny. Bubbles! Oh ho! said the rat, and chirped cheerily in an inviting sort of way. A broad glistening muzzle showed itself above the edge of the bank, and the otter hauled himself out and shook the water from his coat. Greedy beggars, he observed, making for the provender. Why didn't you invite me, Ratty? This was an impromptu affair, explained the rat. By the way, my friend Mr Mole. Proud, I'm sure, said the otter, and the two animals were friends forthwith. Such a rumpus everywhere, continued otter. All the world seems to be out on the river today. I came up this backwater to try and get a moment's peace and then stumble upon you fellows. At least, I beg your pardon. I don't exactly mean that, you know. There was a rustle behind them, proceeding from a hedge wherein last year's leaves still clung thick, and a stripy head with high shoulders behind it peered forth on them. "'Come on, badger!' shouted the rat. The badger trotted forward a pace or two, then grunted, "'Hmm, company!' and then turned his back and disappeared from view. "'That's just the sort of fellow he is,' observed the disappointed rat. "'Simply hates society. Now we shan't see any more of him today. "'Well, tell us.' Who's out on the river? Toad's out for one, replied Otter, in his brand new wager boat. New togs, new everything. The two animals looked at each other and laughed. Well, we'll leave part two there, and we'll carry on with part three of chapter one next. Um, hopefully you're all okay. Seems strange in May, wearing a jumper for the first time, but hopefully we'll have some sunny weather soon. See you soon. Bye.